Okay, you have something called your scapula, which is a fancy word for your shoulder blades. Your shoulder blades are on your back, right? Um, your upper back and your spinal and your shoulder blades and your shoulders all work together in your neck. And then they're connected to your back and connected to your pelvic floor. What I want us to do with the exercise today is we're going to push like that. Kind of we're rounding that upper back by our elbows are staying straight. And this is hard. If you, if you're challenged with this and you still, still don't get it after everything that I say today, it's okay. You have so many other exercises to choose from. Uh, but that's what it looks like. We're, it's called scapular protraction. And if you were looking at my back like this, it would look like this. Okay, so it's the shoulder. All the motion is happening there at the shoulder blades. And it's also helping to stretch your spine some, okay? So we're gonna activate the pelvic brace with scapular protraction. So deep breath in, exhale, activate. And bring it back down and that's one. Okay, uh, we'll just say that was a trial. So let's go together 10 times, deep breath in, exhale, activate, pull that pelvic floor up and in, pull the belly up and in, exhaling like you're blowing through a straw and relax. And you should feel it in your shoulder blades and your shoulders and your upper back. Deep breath in, exhale, activate. And we're on three. Deep breath in, exhale, activate. Four. Deep breath in, exhale, activate that pelvic floor. Pull those belly, pull the belly button to the spine. Exhale and relax. Yes, that's five. Deep breath in, exhale, activate. Six. Oh yes, what a good stretch that is too. Actually, it's a stretch and a strengthening exercise. Deep breath in, exhale, activate. Seven, hold it, hold it, squeeze, and relax. Deep breath in, exhale, activate. Eight, and relax. Deep breath in, exhale, activate, nine, and relax. Deep breath in, exhale, activate, 10, and relax. Okay, now what we're gonna do, the stretch is an inner thigh or a hip adductor stretch. So basically, you're gonna bring your foot, ah, you're not gonna be able to see it so well there. Hmm, let's do it here. So we're gonna bring the foot out to the side like this, and then we're gonna sink back into it. Woo, I'm feeling it even just bringing the, the foot out. So depending on what you're feeling, you can just stretch right here, or if you wanna sink back into it. And to, to get more of a stretch, you know, you sink further back. So we're gonna do a 30 second stretch on each side. So let's go ahead and I am timing us. I'm kind of sitting on my heel here, getting a great inner thigh stretch there. Keep that foot on the ground. Ideally with the toe kind of pointed forward. My foot wants to rotate out, but I'm trying to avoid that from happening. <sighs> Breathing, again, remember to breathe. It's so easy to hold our breath when we're doing these stretches. Okay, now flip and we're gonna do the other side. So foot goes out to the side, foot is flat, toes are pointed forward. Woo, I'm, I'm feeling it there, guys and stretch. Because I have some knee issues, it's a lot easier to kind of sit back on my right heel than it is my left heel. I think I'm going to have surgery in the next few months. 
There's some things you can heal <laughs> with exercise. And honestly, goodness, I'm going off on a tangent, but it's my meniscus. Uh, so there's some things that you need to have a little more intervention for. All right. So good job, guys. Now, remember to share, talk about it, remove the taboo from pelvic health, uh, normalize the conversation, and become, I would also challenge you to become the experts about bladder health and bowel health. So at the end of all this sequence, I'm going to give you an ideal regimen for what a uh, healthy bladder looks like and what healthy bowels look like. And I guarantee you, there are people all around you that are having all kinds of dysfunction with their bowel and bladder. Um, I went on a recent volleyball trip with a high school team. Uh, there were there were people there that were straining to pee. They were constipated. There are people there that were only going two times, only urinating two times in a 24 hour period. People that were leaking. I mean, when you start to identify um, pelvic floor dysfunction and what bladder health looks like and then what are some red flags, uh, you're going to start seeing it all over and, and you're going to want to help people around you. So be the expert and if you have questions about any of that, I'm here and I want to give you tools and resources to share. Thank you and remember to share with someone new today. Bye-bye.